What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as D365Geek, and today we're going to talk about Power Automate, and we're going to talk about the CDS Current Environment Trigger, which is when a record is created, updated, or deleted. Now, I've previously done a video on the differences between the CDS triggers and actions and also the CDS current environment triggers and actions. So you can check out that video. Um, I'll put a link probably here or here um, so you can check that video out. But what I want to do is now go through that trigger to give you the ins and outs of how that works. So as I previously covered it, I'm going to skip over some of it, but I'm going to still try to fill you in a bit of the relevant detail. Uh, but you should definitely check that video out um, because it's very important you choose the right one. So the CDS current environment trigger and actions will only appear if you are creating a flow inside a solution. So a solution is something that uh, people that work with Dynamics um, or Microsoft uh, Dynamics CRM for a long time uh, will be aware of, but it's a way to package together various components so you can then um, you can then move them from one environment to another environment. So this is usually a process of uh, deploying you know from your development to sandbox, to UAT, to you know, pre-prod, post-prod, um, you know, all your different environments. A solution allows you to contain all those things together. When you, the, Microsoft included a new um, CDS current environment trigger and actions inside solutions that only available inside solutions. You can only use them inside solutions, sort of. Um, and that's the only way you can get access to them. So if you go to um, you know, Power Automate and go to Create and try to add a new flow outside of a solution, you just won't have access to that current environment um, triggers and actions if you try and um, search for them in the search box. You only see them when you look inside a solution. So let's go through this. So I'm in my solution here. My solution is called Flow Test. And in the solution, I'm going to click New. And then I'm going to choose Flow. So instead of the usual pop-up that I get about um, what sort of flow do you want and everything else, we just go straight into it. Now, a flow can still be um, in any sort of style inside a solution, but this is the only way you can get to the common data service ones. So if I type in common data service or common, um, once that loads, you'll actually see two. So you'll see the one that I've just been previously um, uh, previously creating videos on the triggers and the actions for, and you'll also see the... Uh, new one if this wants to load today having a slight problem with my power automate let's just hit refresh let's try this again so you can currently see common data service there but if i type in here common data service you can actually see that there is there is two so there is this one which if you hover over just says common data service and there's another one that says kind of common data service dot 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 and that is the common data service current environment so that is the the triggers and the actions that we're going to look at now or the trigger we're going to look at now so if i choose this go to triggers and i have a single trigger so unlike the common data service where i have multiple triggers um, this one only has a single trigger. So one thing you'll also notice is that I do not have the option to run a uh, run a flow on demand. So I do not have that when a record is selected option. I just get when a record is created, updated, or deleted as an action. So if I click on that, we get a list of options. Notice that I don't get an option for um, environment. So the current environment means it's going to use the environment you are currently in. So this environment up here, which is the uh, the Max demo environment. And this way, if I move this solution to another environment, so say to a production environment or another dev environment, I actually don't need to come in here and change the environment at all. It's going to use that inherently. Um, so I have trigger conditions first. So what are my trigger conditions? So my trigger conditions are create, create or delete, create or update, create, update or delete, delete, update, update or delete. So that covers all of them. Um, so you can specify how you want this to run. So you can specify um, if you want it to be on just on create, just on create or update, or if you just want this on delete, so when a record's deleted, you get a, a notification of it, um, you can specify and you can customize these. Um, 
most of the time you probably want to use create or update. Um, sometimes you just want to use update. Sometimes you want to use all three. Um, in my instance, I'm just trying to choose create for now. Actually, no, I'm going to choose create or update. Um, then we need the entity name. So for the entity name, I am going to choose accounts because it's nice and easy. But again, it works with any entity that you're using, any entity type, either system ones or any uh, custom ones that you have. Um, and you can use those to, uh, to trigger your flows. Then we have scope. Uh, I've mentioned this previously before. This is to do with the security in which your flows are running. Uh, in Dynamics or in CDS, you do have this idea of um, security being uh, hierarchical. So you have organization level security. Below that, you have um, parent child business unit security. Below that, you have business unit security, and then you have user security. Um, it's a hierarchical model. There's a lot of details uh, around it. So you can uh, you can look that up um, and investigate that. Uh, in my instance, I'm going to choose organization because I want this to always run um, across my entire organization. Then show advanced options. Um, here we have a few, uh, few cool options. So we have filtering attributes. Filtering attributes allows you to um, specify the attributes that will be used if you are doing an update um, to actually trigger this flow. So what that means is if I had uh, account name in here, for instance, uh, or telephone number, uh, or like a telephone number, uh, and I have those two as, as filters, then when a record is created, it would run the flow. But if I updated anything on that record except for account name or telephone, it would not run. Um, similarly, if I have an existing record and I update account name, then this flow will run if I have it in that filter and attributes. So this allows you to select the fields that you want to trigger this flow on from, from an update standpoint only. It does not run on, it does not take that into account for create or de if a delete or create. Um, you, it will just run on those regardless if that's in your trigger condition. Um, this only works for the update step. We do have filter expressions, so we can actually filter out um, things that we don't want to trigger this on. So if we say we don't want this to trigger on uh, where account name equals test, then we can do that. Um, this is an OData style um, filter expression. So you have to kind of understand OData, although I'll cover in a later video uh, how to easily get some OData style, um, or get some OData, OData style filters. Postpone until. Uh, this allows you to offset when uh, this will run. So you can say that you want this to um, uh, be delayed by a certain amount of time um, once it's triggered, um, so that maybe you don't, uh, maybe it doesn't fire at a certain time. And you actually have run as as well. So this the, this is a new option uh, that's just been added in. Um, you can run as the process owner, as the record owner or as the triggering user. So what that means is if it is the process owner that is the person that created this flow in Power Automate, um, it is the person that has permissions to do these things uh, and it's the person that owns this record. Um, if it's the record owner, then the person who owns the record in the system, provided it is a, a user or a team owned entity, it will run as that owner or we have triggering user i.e. the person that um, did the action that triggered this flow. So in from a dynamic standpoint, we're kind of used to process owner or triggering user. We're not necessarily used to record owner, but that is a new option in here. I think the reasons for this would be around licensing and around permissions to be able to do certain things. Um, so if you leave this blank, it will run in the context of the person that owns the flow, I believe. So we can create this and then we can add another step in here. So we'll just add a compose action in here. Um, and all we'll do is we'll just capture the name of the account. So we'll choose the account name. And that's all we'll do. So when, a when an account is created or updated, we're going to run this flow and we're going to populate out account name. So if I save, if I give this a name, uh, we'll call this CDS flows. No, we won't. we'll call this CDS current uh, current environment 
flows. Um, and we'll hit save. And that says it's saving. And then we can test this out. Once it saves. Right, there we go. We'll hit test. Uh, I'll perform the trigger action and then I'll flick over to my Dynamics environment. So in my Dynamics environment, I've got all these uh, test records here. I could go to Wayne Enterprises uh, and I could import uh, an account number of 99. So that's the account number for Wayne Enterprises. I can hit save. It's trying to say there's a duplicate. Yeah, I know, that's fine. Ignore. And then we'll go back to my flow and this will just take a couple of moments. Ah, drop the green bar, your flow runs successfully. That's good, it's just taking a minute to load up the screen. So, we can see the inputs and the outputs. So we've got trigger condition four, entity account name is account and stroke is four. These actually these actually relate to um, the, the values of the things that we select in those option sets. So if I had the, um, the new experimental um, editor that shows you the, uh, the the expression editor, you actually see these values in there, but I don't have that switched on at the moment. We also have the output of the body. So again, we've, we've looked at this in previous videos. We can see everything that's in here. We can see the account number is 99, the thing that I just put in. Um, we've got the name of it, it's just Wayne Enterprises and the URL, etc. So we get a good selection of the, the data that comes out of it. Uh, it doesn't have all the records, all the, sorry, it doesn't have all of the um, rows inside of um, all the fields inside of the output. Uh, so we may, some, may sometimes need to go off and retrieve the record, but it gives us a good selection in the output including the name of the account, which is Wayne Enterprises, which is what we've captured here. So I can I can do stuff like that and I can say, right, okay, I just want this, I want to get this out. So there we have it. So that is a very brief overview of uh, when a record is updated, um, created, updated or deleted. Um, in future videos, I will go through things like filtering attributes, uh, filtering expressions and postponed tills, um, because I think those are really handy things to know. Um, but I hope this was useful and I hope this shows you what the power of um, building flows inside a solution can do. So if you, uh, if you use this, uh, please let me know uh, in the comments down below. Um, I, I'm specifically interested in the whole run as, because I've not done any of the run as stuff in terms of run as an owner before, because that's something new to me. Um, so it's something I'm going to be looking into. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments down below if you're using this and what your what your take is on it. Um, if you like this video, please like and please share it with your friends. It's always appreciated. If you've not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time.